Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is G. Cole, and welcome to Homegrown, where I get to share with you some good music while talking to some great people. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do, so we can keep you updated when new material is available. We will be posting new episodes bi-weekly. Also, check out the website Homegrown with G. Cole to listen and for all things Homegrown. We're also very, very interactive. Please follow me on Twitter, on Instagram, and on Facebook at MyGCole. And I just want to thank you all. The podcast is available on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Also, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. The video of the interviews are always up there. This episode is brought to you courtesy of Cloth Talk. Make sure you give them a call. Pure hieroglyphics, all right? Talking on fabric. You got something to say, say it on a t-shirt. I've been using them for the past eight months. I love it. 954-591-4064. Again, 954-591-4064. Cloth Talk. Clothing the world one shirt at a time. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm speaking to, and this is just my, uh, so me I put it, Jamaica's premier saxophonist and overall one of our most legendary musicians. In my opinion, there's been no other like Dean Fraser, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to put myself in the block and sing, I don't think there will be another like Dean Fraser. <laughs> Mr. Fraser, welcome, sir. Yes, man. Greetings. Thanks for having me. The know? pleasure is mine. I appreciate it. Um, I'm a person I love going in a rear view mirror and look back, you know, but um, I can tell you this. I, I, from the music I've heard, mm-hmm. you playing live on stage, you playing on recordings, I can tell that that music will come from the heart. I can tell that music is coming from the soul. And whether or not you realize it, every note you play is like you represent Jamaica. And you might as well wear black, green, and gold. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When you're up on stage, yeah. I play. My question for you more than anything else, because you're on stage, you're on recordings, you're everywhere, you're in demand. Everybody wants a piece of the... When, when you sleep? Um... Five hours any time are good. <laughs> That's it? That's it. You've been operating on five hours of sleep? Five hours of sleep, I'm good to go. Brother, trust me, trust me, trust me. And as much as you mean to us, right? And as much as you mean to the folks around the world, I notice also that for the past decade or so, you've been rolling with um, Taurus Riley and the Black Soil Band. Mm-hmm. I can tell that that's more than just musicianship. There's there, there's a bond there. There's kinship. Talk to me a little bit about that relationship you and Taurus Riley and Black Soil. Well, we we got together somewhere around oh eight or oh nine, you know, and um, we started to work together, and it was just magic. Mm-hmm. It grew into something special, and so you know, we as Black Soil, Dean Fraser, Black Soil, you know, the whole group, Taurus mm-hmm. Riley. You know, we try as much as possible to really keep this thing real, keep it like a family, you know, keep it on a certain level that, yeah. you know, we think that that's how our music is supposed to be presented. <laughs>
And that to me is very important because again, everybody and their mother doing music nowadays is just that not everybody doing it right. <laughs> you know? Precisely. I had Quirk in here a couple of days ago and Quirk referred to you as the coolest guy on the planet. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> not much bothers D. I can quote him as a saying. Yeah. You know, how is how important is it for premier talents like yourself to actually mentor young and upcoming musicians right about now? Well, it is most important. Um, I, I myself started very, very young, mm -hmm. and um, me at about fifteen year old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Me start playing a, a really top rank band in Jamaica at fifteen years wow. of age. Wow! I didn't belong there, you know. Mm -hmm. I was very young. I didn't know anything. Right. And. Um, <clears throat> for the quality band that, that I was playing in, mm -hmm. I, I mean, my musicianship was, I, I mean, I was a beginner. I was still learning. I, I didn't even think I was holding the instrument properly. Wow. wow. But what went well for me is I had great mentors. Wow. I had people who saw what I didn't see, you know, mm -hmm. you know. And I think I may that may have rubbed off on me somehow. I got you. You know, I got you. I, I you know, people start saying, hmm, "This youth have potential, man." And mm -hmm. you know, there was always a little opening there for me. You know, yeah. so from Sonny Bradshaw as the main man mm -hmm. to Jackie Jackson. Wow. And uh, you know, then I had Melba Liston, as a jazz trombone player from here. The mm -hmm. stage played with basic Quincy Jones, Duke, wow. everybody. Yeah, yeah. You know, these people just pointed me in the right direction. You know, so fifteen year old, Dean. fifteen year old from my wow. my teacher, my teacher Babe O'Brien just said, "I'm going to send you to Sonny's band." You know, mm -hmm. and I said, "For what?" And he said, "You're going to just learn everything." <laughs> you know, he said, "That's a school to go." You know, so. Right. You know, with that, you know, I developed this thing where I think that if the youth them want help, I must give them help. Yeah, yeah. You know? I love that. I love that. Because we, we live in this day and age where a lot of times, and sometimes it's not by intention. Sometimes people are just on the go. Yeah. But it, not everybody is so open. There's a little bit of reluctance to mentor and to grow and stuff like that. So it's always a beautiful thing to see the, the veterans, especially somebody your caliber, yeah. not having any hesitance to say, yo... You know what I mean? Let me yeah, show you well, the ropes. Well, I, as I said before, at no time in my development mm -hmm. that, that I came face to face with anybody who shunned me. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't get, even when I went to the studios for the first time, mm -hmm. even though I spent like a year, a whole year just hanging out and trying to learn what was happening. Mm -hmm. There was always people, Sly Dunbar, Bobby Ellis, wow. Dirty wow. you know, Tommy McCook, Vin Garden was always saying, come play a come song, play. man. You understand yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, And enough encouragement. And you understand me? I love it, yeah. So it is only fitting for you to do the same, you right. know? Right, right, right. So you were brought up that way. So you just, you just, you just have, you. I return the blessing. Thank you. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> that, that band, the Sonny Bradshaw, that's the Sonny Bradshaw 7 that yes, they're talking about. Sonny Bradshaw 7. Wow. Talk about legends and legacy. <laughs> no, I was talking the other night to Inner Circle. Yes. Right. And, um, you know, of course, we touch on the legend and the legacy, legacy mm. of the legendary Jacob Miller. Yes. You know what I mean? Who was, of course, there in the presence of your beginning of your career. Yes. Give me a little insight into that relationship with you and Jacob. Well, I don't know what them tell you, but I guess they're supposed to tell you, say, Jacob was me was Jacob's sidekick. <laughs> See? Real? Yes. So yeah. in, in in most of my early days of recordings and, mm -hmm. and, and even as a live musician, mm -hmm. I was known as Dean Youth Sox Fraser. Mm -hmm. See, now it's Jacob called me that. Okay, okay. Jacob get it in. Yes. No, yeah. well them used to call me youth. Mm -hmm. In a Sonny Bradshaw band. They call me youth because me did young. I had a young youth, yeah. But, but when Jacob come, Jacob say, a youth sucks him for name. You know? So Jacob called me youth. <laughs> so, you know, Jacob and myself was very, very close. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. I mean, Jacob used to come and pick me up in my yard early, man. You know, I said, come. Mm. And we go studio, we hang out and, you know, all, wow. of, the, all of the stuff. So, you know, Jacob was really another one. As me tell you, mm -hmm. people used to just come and, and Jacob carried me, yes, and 
I remember the Peace Concert, I was the saxophonist with wow. in a circle, you know. Wow, wow, mm. wow. Talk about some memories. <laughs> yeah, man. Serious man. things. And amazingly enough, you know, we talk about the legends, we talk about yourself, we talk about Inner Circle, Jacob Miller, Third World, Lloyd mm -hmm. Parks, Gregory Isaacs, and so forth. The roots can be traced back to almost the same place, mm -hmm. almost the same time. Yeah, man. Kingston seemed like it was like a hotbed it for is, the talent. It was, you know, it, 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 there was a special, maybe a special breeze blowing. Yeah, you know, at the time. At the time. Mm -hmm. the, the music was just fantastic and, 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 None of the musicians tried very hard. Wow. You know, wow. They, it, them, them, they just have it and Natural believe lessons. in it. Yeah, man. Wow. The thing I noticed a little different, and I don't say, I mean, things go on. And right now we have all kind of things that go on socially and so forth. But right. the climate back then was real where it can vacillate from being nice and cool and love and harmony. Yes. To turmoil. Yeah. You know, up to us needing a peace concert, so to speak. Right. You know what I mean? But the music that you guys put out at the time was reflective of every time and every era. Not glorifying anything negative, you know. Precisely. But of course, drawing attention to yes, what's going on. Yeah, we used to we used to say, look at this, you know. Mm -hmm. We we used to say, This is what we should do, you know. The 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 artists of that era tried to bring something to the table we call love and peace mm -hmm. most of the times, if not all of the time. Wow. And um, that, that's what made the music very international so quickly, you know, mm -hmm. because, you know, he, outside of Bob Marley and, 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 and Peter and Bunny, you know, whalers in general, mm -hmm. um, the majority of the singers, so to speak, Mm -hmm. was just defending love and harmony and right. speak about Africa and apartheid wow. and all these things. And, you know, even as a youngster who started to play with music at 15, you so, you know, I mean, finished school and all them kind of thing there, but the music taught me so much, you know. Wow. I know about Mandela and all these people through the music. Mm -hmm. Joma Kenyatta, whosoever, all these great leaders from Africa, me know about them. Through their music. Music. You wow. understand me? So school, not school. The school that Different, too. but school nonetheless. Yeah, school that too. I love it. And I always feel like that's how, like you mentioned, that's why the international market gravitated so, because yep. that was our news outlet. Yep. That was how they knew about what Jamaica yep. was. And not even that, you know, Jamaica mm -hmm. did not teach them too. Mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mad, man, mad, mad. Say, Marcus Gavi, I teach them, you know. Yeah. Jamaica, I teach them too. Yeah. And, you know, because of all of that, you know, that, that revolution just, you know, mm -hmm. kept going and, you know, became strong. Wow. Yeah, man. Message in the music, ladies mm -hmm. and gentlemen. Now, you've put out some albums. Mm -hmm. You played on some Bob songs, and some of those, you put out a couple of two, I think two albums and so forth, commemorating yeah. Bob. Right. And uh, did you ever work with him in person? Most definitely. What was that experience like? Super, super business. Yeah. Survival album. I think that was 1981. Mm -hmm. And it was... It, it, that experience stay with me right now like it just happened wow. a moment ago. Wow. You understand mm -hmm. me? And um, that taught me a lot too. Working with Bob. Yeah, because me see a man who was never afraid to attack and 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 make music serious mm. and 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 you know he, he, he is one thing me can tell you about Bob Marley. If if a musician walked in or he walked into a, a, a the presence of musicians mm. playing. And from them sound good and appealing and them a play good. Mm -hmm. Bob Marley want them pan him record, him want them in him music. Wow. Wow. You understand me? Wow. So that is how him send for me, him come listen to Dennis Brown with Pan Tour. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was playing for Dennis Brown at the time. And him, him say, I want that man to come play for me. And that was it. That was it. Me and Nambo and Chico does. Right.
I love that though, because a lot of times, you know, it's amazing, and that's the that, that's that's that, that's the pinnacle, that's the zenith right there. Yeah. And nowadays, you have artists that have not reached anywhere there, and they're so, you know, skeptical about saying, "Yo, let me just embrace other musicians." Yeah. Well, you see, uh, one thing about a lot of the the, the artists is, it the, the the thing becomes, um, a media hype. Mm. And it's I don't it, it doesn't do good for the music. Right. The media part of it, yes, you know, you know, social media, you know, you shot to a trillion people in a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, and I'll, most of the times, I, I I should think social media forget that there is music. <laughs> it's just the imagery and what go yeah, on. Right. So everything happened about how the guy looks and yeah, him mm -hmm. fat and him wear some certain shirt. So mm -hmm. I could get out three million people for start look that way there and thing and mm -hmm. and everybody tend to forget say there's there music. Here. Music. <laughs> you understand me? So yeah. that's why we're having that problem that you speak of. You understand? Right, me? right, right. Absolutely right. The pros and the cons of social media. Eh? Yep. It gets to get the stuff out there, but it also gets a lot of the craziness right. out there too. Right. I love it. I love it. Now and you talk about my favorite musician of all times, genre, mm -hmm. whatever, across mm -hmm. all genres. The reason I ever picked up a microphone was Dennis Emmanuel Brown. Yeah. What was D Brown like? Working or should I say what was working with D Brown like? Working, um, working with a man like Dennis Brown was, <laughs> it was so much joy. Um, I don't remember ever, and I worked with D Brown for years. Mm -hmm. I don't remember ever seeing him in a bad mood. Wow, wow! I reflect you know, the music. Yeah, and and he loved the music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, him him just loved the music. Him. You know, and, and, and this is something that, again, that social media, I think, has taken away from a lot of the young artists. A lot of them don't love the music anymore. Right. They love what it brings. Yes, them love how it look and how it feel and, mm -hmm. you know, what people say about it. But, you know, 
man like Dennis Brown was just in just trick. living he just want to sing. Yeah. You know, and yeah. he want to sound like a good singer, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. In, in other old days, people used to say, boy, I'm sound like a ballad here. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and I'm yeah. stylish and, yeah. and, and thing, but it made him a great singer, you mm-hmm. know, and, and I don't think till today there are no other singers in Jamaica. Unmatched. And we can't even carry it outside of the country, <laughs> outside of the genre, too. You, you know, know, it's it's amazing the way you describe Dennis Brown a while ago, personality wise. Mm-hmm. That's how people describe Dennis, uh, D- Dean Fraser to me. <laughs> 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 I kid you not. Every time I talk to somebody who has spent any quality time with Dean, yeah. the same thing you said to me a while ago. Yeah. That's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this though. Mm-hmm. Um, you've put out and you started this even before it became popular to mm-hmm. put out the instrumental albums where the instrument was the lead. Right. You know what I mean? Um, yes, we did see that with a couple of top 40 acts and so forth, yeah. but it was primarily a couple, a few, especially in them days, mm-hmm. American acts and so forth. What made you decide, say, you know something now, man, this, act, this, 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 this instrument, this sound needs to lead? I don't think that I decided that. Mm. Um, I think people just wanted to hear mm. that. And I, you know, roll with it. I just gave them. You know, I, 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 it's not something that I did just decided that, that boy, I'm going to do this. Because mm-hmm. what I noticed was that when I started to do studio sessions, mm-hmm. you know, producers like, you know, E.T., Errol Thompson, Joe Gibbs, Days, mm-hmm. you know, wanted me to do instrumentals. Mm-hmm. Donovan Jeremy. Mm-hmm. And, and then, of course, Philip Borel, Fatis, right, Fatis. You know, so... You know, and then the people of Jamaica like to have that, you know. Mm-hmm. Jamaica has always had a lead instrumentalist. Wow. You know, um, Don Drummond, Tommy McCook, you know, Roland, yeah. Lester Sterling, Bobby Ellis, yeah. um, Dizzy Johnny, all of these people were lead instrumentalists. So right, right, at some right. time or the other, it was being done. It was being done. I dig it. I dig it. <laughs> now, you've traveled the country, you've traveled the world, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you remember this place named Mallard's Beach Hotel, know what you're in? Yes, I do. All right. That's the first time I saw Dean Fraser. Right? Okay. You probably never remember. I'm like eight, nine years old, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, Dean came through and pl- did a show there. Them time, uh, w- the stage was probably pretty small, but I'm a little kid, so it was big I to me. I remember it, yeah. I mean, I tell her, say... When I left that show, you couldn't mm-hmm. tell me, say, me now go play the saxophone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I never came across a sax. I eventually went to the marching band and I got the trumpet. Right. And tried to turn it into a sax, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Had to be reminded that, one, it's not a sax. And right. two, you're not Dean Fraser. <laughs> but I tell you, say, it has had that impact on me ever since I'm a youth. So, yeah. but I'm in love with you. Just keep doing what you're doing. Um, I, I, and and I, again, I've run into you in, in, at various events. Uh, this is something that means a lot to me and a lot to a lot of people. They have run into you quite a few times. And the one thing is this. Dean Fraser always have an aura and a presence where everybody can come up and say, hey, hello. You know what I mean? Yeah. Never too big. Never too bold for the fans and so forth. Yeah, man. Well, we learned that, as I say, at an early age. Mm-hmm. And we learn where... We learned from a man named Sonny Bradshaw, of right. course. Big up Sonny Bradshaw. Yes, and him say... Him say, musician must behave a certain way, you know, so that they are also respected. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he that's the kind of theme that he, you right, know, right. live by. Mm-hmm. And uh, as I, you know, grow and growing to who am I, who I am right now, me just realize, say, uh, yeah, if you deal and you know there are times when you get upset and of things, course we hear it because i've seen him upset right right and, right and done some vicious things <laughs> right but, we're humans know, right but mm-hmm. the thing is you know you have to just you know behave a certain way and mm-hmm. you know you, you can't stop people in them tracks if them out you know yeah. they must step out of them way and things of but, course but of course when you do that you know, it is easier to deal with. Right, right. Be diplomatic. Overall, diplomatic. I love it. I love Respect. it. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And we need that a lot more in our culture because I am a firm believer, and as, as the young artists come on the program and listen, I always say to them, in this day and age, when if, if Dean Fraser drop an album today, right. 
them you have it from yesterday, you know. Right. Don't ask me how them get it. Right. But them have it from yesterday. Right. So in this point in time, for somebody to get up and take out them hard earned money and go pay for the music then, is not the music they're buying. No. It's a piece of you. Right. You know? So if they if, if they feel reproached by you, mm -hmm. then why would they? <laughs> and why should they? So I'm gonna really dig that and that's some wise words and hopefully they're paying attention to that. Now yeah. you're in and around and you're seeing the music, the music is coming your way. What how do you feel about the music that's coming out of Jamaica right now? Well, I don't have a problem with the music. You know? mm -hmm. I really don't have a problem with the music. I think you have these kids and they are hearing the music a certain way mm -hmm. and they are trying to produce and, you know, come up with music that they think is now. Right, right, right. What I have a problem is a lot of the lyrical content you have to be careful of. Because mm -hmm. what you say, you have to be responsible for. Word sounds on poor. <laughs> you understand me? Yes, that is sir. one. Two, I would really love, and, 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 and I try to tell most of them, mm -hmm. if you decide that you want to be a doctor, you can't become a new doctor. <laughs> I get you, I get you. You understand me? I get me? you. So you can't start cut up people and say, I guess I mean, I deal with it now. <laughs> Yeah. You have to deal with it. You have to go to school. You have to learn certain things. Yeah. You have to refer to certain doctors who did come before you and thing and thing. And that's the way they should treat the music. Wow. A wow. man must revisit the music and know where the thing come from. Mm -hmm. You know, for know where to go. Growth doesn't mean abandoning the principles. No. And, 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 you know, people like Taurus Riley... Man, sir. Oh, him just come so all of a sudden. But Taurus Riley is one of those. Chronics is the same thing. He respects the formula. It's one of those. You look on them out there and you ask them about the music and thing, and them can go way yeah. back. Yeah. You understand me? Because them respect where the music I come from. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Mm -hmm. And them do them like a homework. And so they are able to mix that with whatsoever culture, whatsoever feel that they have mm -hmm. now. And you and are better off. You're no. much better off. That, that makes so much sense. Yeah, you you know? modernize the thing, off. put your 2018 on it, but the foundation... The foundation will carry you through. Wow. Wow. You talk mm. about Taurus Riley, for example. I was at the show the other day, you know, right. Pines, right? And on my way home... Mm -hmm. I don't recommend anybody do this, but I was creating a little thing on my way home on my phone. Yeah, it. Because it came to my mind right, right then and there. I'm saying, Barry Hammond, mm -hmm. right, is the premier right. artist to me, quintessential of the past however many years. Right. But my parents' generation won't give him to me, them claim him. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, oh, artist, that get yes. your own. So my question always is, if 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 Barry Hammond is the standard for let's say Generation X. Mm -hmm. Is Taurus Riley the standard for Generation Next? I feel so. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I understand, yes. There's a lot, especially after watching that. And I have seen guys before, but yes. after sitting back and watching that show, I wasn't in the front like everybody else, like I normally am. Right. I was at the side, I was at the back, I was analyzing, I was seeing the whole night. Right. And I'm saying to myself, wow, the last five shows I went to was Lionel Richie, it was, um, was CeeLo Green, it was right. Sade, it was John Legend, it was this, right. and Janet Jackson. And this was right up there with all of them. Right. That you don't see. Right. And the, you have to remember that that kind of intimacy is straight up his street. He has total control mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. Seeing from I see him walk on the stage in the evening, I know say, people are going to be like, wow. Yeah. Because it's straight up his street. Yeah. And this is what I'm talking about. Um when you when when I was a kid, even though I was playing in a band, mm -hmm. I used to go to Carib Theater to watch these Christmas man in concerts and yeah. all that. But when I go and I see John Holt, I am like, wow. wow. When I go and I see Tommy McCook and the Supersonics, even though you know me just have played the instrument, but when me see old oh, the man them deal with the stage you know me just, yes and 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 I, I was even telling 
Frank, um, Frankie Campbell from Fab Five mm-hmm. the other day. I tell him, say, boy, when me go Carib, and me see them lead out three blind men and Frankie and Steve Golden come out <laughs> and Junior. Yeah. And them start play killing me softly. Crazy. And me just sit down there and me think after the show done, me show everybody walk out of the theater left me because my head just swell <laughs> big and me just, me just couldn't understand mm-hmm. said the man them could have made the music sound so good and right. so different, you know? And and this is this is what me really... A man thinks that through my DJ in music must, you know, yes, substance that. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 no, yeah. man, the music must, you know, right, right up there. Not because him is a DJ and yeah. him thinks that boy him is a dancer, I can't think. You, know, you see what happened with the foreign dancer songs? That the music is approached from a different angle. Mm-hmm. Them playing the same dance hall, you know, them try to change the name, them try to do all kinds of things. Call it something else, yeah. You understand them call it different things and things. But it's same our dance music, are. same way. But you see how them approach it. It's not anything where, you know, you just do something. Yeah, yeah man, I like that track. Man. It's and properly done. Yeah, man. You, you, you can put music to it and it, and yeah. it can be great. Makes it commercially viable. That way, yes, yeah. man, it can be. You mentioned even Fab Five again. How we, I'm just jogging on my Dean fears and memories. Mm-hmm. There's a Ultras ball ground, you know, Ultras ball ground. Yes, I know it up. well, yes. And I lived right across Buckfield, Mansfield. I know it up. very well, yeah. Well, there was a show, it was Christmas time too, Christmas yeah. Street kind of vibe, and there are a couple of big acts, we won't name the names, a couple of big acts on there, and you know what yeah. I mean? There are people there, couple, couple hundred people, you know. And then Fab Five went on, same Fab Five went up. Yeah. I may have watched the show. And I, within minutes, let me tell you, so I look, so I look, so I look, so I look, so I'm in a sea of people. Right. And these are the, the other big acts are acts where all over you sip on JBC TV, right. all over. But when Fab Five crank up and give you that music, I had to wait until the crowd dissipated just to get right. out of the venue. So. Right. And that feeling, I don't get that that much no more. Right. So, and, and, and this is all I'm saying, you know, this is all I'm saying. I'm just saying, youth and youth. We can't take nothing from you, mm-hmm. see? Because the stage that you are right now, we were at that same stage years ago. And, you know, the older people said, what them boy are doing? Mm-hmm. And them mm-hmm. think that, you know. But, you know, let's, let's, let's look at something simple right now. Mm-hmm. If you go into a party in Jamaica and them say, oldies, mm-hmm. what happens? The music goes straight to the sixties. Right, right, right. And that that happened in nineteen seventy. Mm-hmm. It happened in the nineteen eighty. It happened in the nineteen ninety. Mm-hmm. And it happened in the two thousand. Right now. Yeah, yeah. See, you gone like what four or five decades of music, but the minute time on say Oldie. oldies, it goes straight, straight to the sixties. <laughs> <laughs> I, never yeah, that, of it. I never thought of it. Right, it, 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 it just got to scare, rock steady. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe it goes 69, 70, just maybe. Right. right? I mean, you have the big parties that them call 70s, 80s, mm-hmm. 90s mm-hmm. now, right? But still, the majority <laughs> of the 60s. music go straight to the 60s. If it ain't broke. If it, the foundation, the foundation. foundation. And, and you're absolutely right, because there's nothing you do in this world right about now, today, that you don't have to rely on the foundation right. for getting it right. Right. So you want to you want to look and dance all 30 years' time. Mm-hmm. And man just roll out dance all as old is because it was a certain kind of music that people had to respect and people want to remember. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's legacy they, going on. Yes. People don't realize your legacy is not what you do, it's what people are gonna say about yeah, what you do. Man. And trust me when I say we need for we need we need to put some work into that. Now, a musician like yourself I always wonder this. Right now I see some quality musicians coming out of let's say Edna Mandy. Yes. Alpha when it was in his head, he, he put out some some musicians. Yes. And there are other musicians that are self taught that are really, really good. Yes. Right now, when we look at the music, I'm gonna say, All right, well Dean Fraser, you know, them have the thing away with comfortable. If you guys decide tomorrow, say, Yeah, you hear me, vacation time and then I call me, we'll call you. Right. How do you feel about the young crop of musicians right now? You think we're in good hands? We're in good hands. Yeah? Yeah. And the, 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 my only glitch is 
as I said before, um, the youth them dead eh? mm-hmm. and everything. My only glitch is that you, um, well, I, I, for instance, me, mm-hmm. I would take all my pay and buy Studio One records. I mean, all mm. my pay. You see how some man get them pay and drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when them done drink, them pay done. Them gone. Well, when me used to go into the record shop, when me come out, mm-hmm. my pay done. done. <laughs> you understand me? Yep. But then you have to remember that I didn't have internet and all of this. Mm-hmm. So I had to get hard copies of everything. To so study. I used to buy these records and just sit down for hours. And just listen for hours. And then, you know, those liner notes at the back of the yeah. records. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we used to me study it like a history book, you know. Wow. Have to, yeah, me have to say, who yeah, write what? Who produce who what? Do this. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Gambler Off. Okay, Van McCoy. Okay, Linda Creed. Right. And, uh, you know, me, me used to say Tom Bell and Linda Creed. Didn't even know Tom Bell was Jamaican. You understand wow, me? Wow, wow. And you know, you know. But well, um, his name popped up on all these records. Yeah, and Dozier, and Dozier, and then you know you would see people like Smokey Robinson name popping up and all of that. You know, mm-hmm. so you know you, you would just study these liner notes and then when you look next album come out, then you, you say, oh, you know, yes, this guy. Uh, Anthony Jackson and bass, so it's early on playing drums, Richard T and keyboards, and you would you that's where you studied and learned everything. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I spent all my money. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so and this it was is beneficial. right, but this is what now I would love a lot of these little young instrumentalists. I want them to go to their internet. Mm-hmm. Them, you must recognize when a studio one song a player from when a do creed song a play. Yeah, you yeah. understand me? Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, and if you ask Slide Out yeah. Bar, or you ask Robbie Shakespeare, or you ask Light Parks, you ask Dean Fraser, I'm gonna say, Yeah, man, that's a studio one song. I'm, yeah, man, that's a from the roller, that's a treasure isle song, yeah, from it roll off like that because there's a signature sound, yes, it, there is. Wow. You know, wow. that's a Channel One song. That's a Joe Gibbs song. Mm-hmm. That's a Harry J song. Mm-hmm. You understand me? Because we listened to the music and studied it so much that, you know, the, the different sounds, mm-hmm. you know, it, uh, we just retain it and and that was it. Technology kind of steals some of that too, you know, because I, I, I'll tell you this too. It's like for me, when I used to consume music, I buy a lot of CDs. It was right. like that too where well, I get my first job at NCB. Right. And, um, you know, I wasn't paying mortgage or nothing. So every month when I got paid, the CD guy would come by the bank. Right. And we buy this, we buy that. So right. we can always see Lennon's. But I knew what a Babyface song sounded like, different from what a Teddy Riley song sounded like. And, and, and I, I totally agree with you because that was the last of the Mohicans. You know, mm-hmm. that, ever since um, the music left that era, you know, everything just... It's all the same. Sound the same. Somebody find a formula and it work and, yeah. then say, and everybody say, well... That's it. That way I do. Everything sounds the same. Again, that's why I said Taurus Riley. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm claiming him. You know what I mean? <laughs> Pops, on the, on the, on the Woodberries, I, I claim him too, but since I don't want to give him up. <laughs> no, you have um, you have a, a, a nice relationship with the South Florida community. So yeah. I figure you're, you're very qualified to answer this right here. Yeah. We have so much talent here. We got plaques on the walls. We got Grammys on the mantelpieces. Some of the most talented musicians, artists, singers, and whatnot. Why is it that we struggle to break artists in South Florida? Sometimes artists have a left for them thing there. What, what's the struggle? I think the, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a kind of a mindset, you know. Mm-hmm. People tend to think that if the artists don't go to Jamaica and touch and the roots, really <laughs> the artists just don't make it. Mm. It's weird. It's sometimes you wonder. Mm-hmm. But that's the way it goes. The, 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 the people really think that if you don't rub your hands in that Jamaican style, you are not. <laughs> it's not real. It's not real. <laughs> you know, it, it, I mean, me wonder sometimes, because I've 
come across very good um, singers and musicians, not only in South Florida, but in New York City, you know, mm -hmm. Philadelphia, all about. Mm -hmm. But the people like when you come dip your foot in the water at Jamaica. Yeah. Them love it. You give it a level of authenticity. Yes. You just can't get right there, so. See, Mr. Riley, there you claim him. <laughs> we claim him. But at Jamaica, him come, come dip him foot in the water. Yeah. And others have had to do it. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> you know, don't get me wrong. It ain't enough. So I mean, for those people listening, you think, well, I'm just go back to Jamaica. No, no, no. no. no, no. <laughs> That's the one thing, though, I can I, I observe with the ones that, that do it and do it well, especially from this generation. Right. Don't take it for granted that they do, they do the work, you know. Yeah. They do the work. I've observed Taurus over the course of the years. Yeah. That brother them. Yeah, he works hard. Trust he me. He does the work. Yeah, man. And I sit and I, and I, and I realize when... I was, they're probably looking at me a little strange backstage because, you know, so everybody watched the show. Yeah. I was kind of like studying some other things because right. I had all intentions to sit down with him too. Right. You know, and I'm watching and I'm observing like, it's like, it's it's natural connection, but it's also, you can tell it's work time. Yeah. I'm connecting with my people. They understand what I'm saying. Right. These people come out to hear songs. I'm mean, not going to sing two lines. I'm going to sing the rest. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm I've got pull it up. I'm pull it up. <laughs> I'm sure that. That sure that. That sure that. I'm like, yeah. yo. And yeah. I'll give Tyrus this. What you get on the CD, you get, if not better, on stage. practice a thing called when we play mm -hmm. right we play a cut above the CD mm -hmm. it shows yeah it shows. one level above what we recorded because we can reproduce it I love it. I love it. <laughs> we need more of that, Dean. We need more of that. And, and we need to put the Dean, the, the, the Dean Fraser Institution. And we have the, the, the artists that must come through. You make them know what we're going because we really do need it. Now, when it comes to the music also, I do realize that there's a difference with how things are accepted here versus Jamaica versus like Europe, right? Where in the world is your favorite place to, to, to play? I would say Europe, you know. Yeah? Yeah. Um, Europe seemed to like when you dip your foot in the water Jamaica yeah them like the music coming that way right 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 they they um I think they they well music has always I mean Europe has always recognized roots music yes yes jazz right mm -hmm. none of these jazz musicians in America they they die of hunger here mm -hmm. But they the Europeans them. love them, yeah. you know, love them bad, bad. And um, Africa, Africa now is just that's the budding spot right now. This thing, what? Wow, wow. We, we have gone to Africa twice in the past two months. Whoa. And we are heading there wow. again before the year finish. And we're not talking about going there for the one show. Is one show we're gonna go yeah, to? Fly to go to one show and come back. Fly to go to one show and come back. But listen to me. Wow. Why your heart full bass. Mm. Mm. You know, the people just you know, them not wow. let you go, them just own you mm. and own your music. Wow. It's beautiful, trust me. Wow. Whatever you have in your mind it's supposed to be, that's exactly yes, what it is. It's beautiful. I dig it. Ladies and gentlemen, we gotta appreciate the music, we appreciate the culture because what I get from it is as I see the people in Europe, people in, uh, the, the easiest way to break it down pretty much is I feel like that audience loves music. Right. I feel like our audience love artists. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So yes. if you have yeah, if you have a hit and a name, or else it's just tolerate or tolerate it. Right. But in Europe, if you sound good and you play good. And you play good. Them love it. Bring it on. I'm saying. Bring it on. I love it. Now, um, time's of the essence. I'm gonna let you get out of here. Let me ask you this. When it comes to the music that's going out there right now, right? Mm -hmm. Um Jamaica is is pumping it out, Europe is pumping it out. America is pumping out, but it's reggae music nonetheless. Right. Some people have a gripe with it. I personally feel like, say, boy, 
if you hear music I come from way across so it opens up a market for the original to go how do you feel about you know other markets popping up like you mentioned Africa there's California out the, the west coast they have one thing to say about that mm -hmm. We have always said our music is international. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I hate that, right? I hate that. If you wanted it to be in your backyard, you should keep it in your backyard. Thank you. Mr. Fraser. <laughs> I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. I dig it. Um, what you got coming up? Where the people them can look out for you? We, we're, going, we, we're coming straight with Taurus Riley. This new album is amazing. It's, mm -hmm. it's different. It's hardcore. It's roots. Wow. It's making statements. You know, wow, some wow. of it is saying I love you too, but right, right, which is necessary, yes, but right. but but come March, this is it. Wow, wow, yeah. The other thing, you've got a you got an album out, yes, that's a Dennis Brown, yes, and that's that just came out of nowhere, mm -hmm. but it's quite nice. <laughs> To you for the past couple days, I'm and like, we started to record the new Dean Fraser album. And for some reason, we lost the hard drive uh, in a little accident. But yeah, we, start from we start. have it here, so <laughs> we start again. <laughs> well, that's what you get when you create the thing, right? You know, yeah. for the damn, <laughs> so we start again, you know. So. Dean. Trust me, I'm telling you, I appreciate me, I appreciate you stopping through, yeah, man. So, 2019 is a thing, just more music and more great music. and you know, we want we want our music to live. Yeah. So yeah. we have to make it live. Well, continue to do what you're doing. If you keep doing it the way you're doing it, we're here. It's going to live. You Great. know what I mean? And I'm going to continue to play the stuff for the massive and crew. Respect. My pleasure. Thank you, sir. And I'm cool. Ah, blessings, blessings. <laughs> <laughs>